Do you like your CPUs running at 95 degrees? Well, if so, then today's video might not be for you. But if you like your CPUs running not just a little bit cooler, but a lot cooler, and we're talking going from 94 degrees Celsius in the case of this 7950X down to 55 degrees, then today's video may be of some help to you. Where in the recent testing of Ryzen, the 7950X, I came into quite a few issues or things that made me scratch my head. And for instance, in a previous video, we talked about fixing the micro stuttering problem. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about fixing the temperatures, which this one is the biggest problem I've seen so far. It's in fact, even worse than Intel's 12900K. That thing runs really hot. And when you undervolt that CPU, you have to shave off 400 megahertz and you only save 80 watts. And I say only in this case because we're going to be comparing that to the 7950X here today where I managed to drop the power consumption down from 230 watts all the way down to 127 watts. And that's stable. This thing is perfectly stable now. And with that drop in power consumption, we also managed to drop down the temperatures from 94 degrees Celsius down to 55 degrees Celsius. In terms of performance, we're only losing 5% performance when it comes to the Cinebench R23 multi-core score. But the power that we're saving, not just in these productivity benchmarks, but also when it comes to gaming. And this is where we drop the power consumption down on this CPU down by half. And in fact, we were getting virtually the same FPS in the titles when I was doing this. Now, this isn't just an AMD problem in general. Before we move on with this problem, it's an Nvidia problem, it's an Intel problem. Basically, these companies are all trying to hit the top of the benchmark charts and they're just completely forgetting about power consumption. Not just power consumption, but also all the other things that come with that higher power consumption. For instance, needing a higher end case, you've got to go spend more money, needing a higher end power supply, needing a higher end water cooler, all these things are now sort of being ignored just to get to the top of those benchmark charts. And then to top all that off, the electricity costs are going up faster than this thing can get to 95 degrees. Though back to the CPU at hand, here's where AMD are telling me that 95 degrees is normal on this CPU. They're like, look, this thing's designed to run at 95C all day, every day, 24 hours a day. It's not gonna be a problem for the longevity of the chip it's not gonna be a problem for performance. Though here's where I'm left baffled because apparently with this launch of the Ryzen 7000 series, AMD can defy the laws of thermodynamics in that they, the hotter something gets, the more efficient it gets in the case of semiconductors, but we all know that is not the case. Even in a video I did on the stock Intel coolers and why I thought they were horrible, I showed this exact inefficiency when you drop the temperatures on the silicon to a point that's significant, your power consumption also goes down in turn. But basically when it comes to semiconductors, the hotter you run these things, the more leakage, the more wastage it's gonna produce, and that is going to become a problem in itself, and that is gonna cause more problems. That's why these CPUs will get to a point where they'll just simply shut off or melt. The back to the 7950X and also the 7900X, this should apply for the 12 core as well. If you wanna undervolt, just simply download the Ryzen master tool. And once you've got this application open, you can copy my settings if you want to. I then locked in a manual configuration setting for all cores. And then I dropped this down to 4.8 gigahertz. And usually out of the box, this thing will go to 5.1 gigahertz all cores. So we dropped it down to 4.8 and also dropped the voltage down slowly from I believe out of the box, it runs around 1.25 to 1.27 volts. We ended up getting this down to a stable voltage of actually around 0.975, but we ended up settling on 0.985. So we dropped the voltage down tremendously and we only dropped the clock speeds down 300 megahertz all core. And so this led us to drop the Cinebench results down from 37,000, roughly 500 points to around 35,500 points all core. And also our single core did go down from 1,972 points down to 1,717. And what we've got here at the end of the day now is a CPU that's just running so much more smoother. And in my opinion, 
the latency is going to be ever so slightly better without the cores having to bump their frequency up and down as a result of that. And in fact, my manual OC when it comes to Ryzen, this is how I like to do things. I've said this in the past when I did an undervolting tutorial, it was met with a lot of negativity, but a lot of people did thank me for that tutorial as well. It's saving them a lot of power, saving them a lot of temperatures, a lot of hassle. There is the per core optimizer as well if you want to go down that route. I feel that takes a lot longer of a time to lock in. So is that time that you're going to be spending doing the per core optimization going to be worth it? That's a question for you. Though in terms of using the auto per core optimizer in the Ryzen software utility, whether it's all core or single core, I found both these settings didn't do really anything except slightly increase the all core uh, Cinebench numbers and also drop down the single core clock to around 5.5 gigahertz. So I actually got slightly low performance on the single core doing the auto settings, the power consumption and the temperatures, though they remained very high on both the auto settings. So if you are going to undervolt, I do recommend manually undervolting this CPU and you are going to see huge differences in power consumption and temperatures. Now the final thing to talk about is the gaming numbers. And here is where I'll put up some graphs for you guys where we had the GPU only, when we undervolted our RTX 3080 in Apex Legends, we went from 549 watts from the wall down to 427 watts. So this in itself makes a huge difference, undervolting your GPU. And I think with the RTX 4000 series cards, the difference is only going to get bigger too. The CPU, we went from that 549 watts, however, in Apex Legends down to 452. So we're nearly saving 100 watts in gaming just on our 7950X by doing this undervolt. And then the CPU and the GPU together, we went from 549 watts down to 338 watts. And our FPS went from 285 down to 274. So we lost a whole sweet FA and our power consumption just dropped tremendously. So in the end, what you're looking at with undervolting, it's the way to go going forward and it solves a lot of problems on the AMD 7000 series, especially on these higher end CPUs. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed today's video on the 7950X and undervolting, which makes an absolutely massive difference to the likes of, I've never seen this kind of difference on a CPU before, but also it does shed some light on some of the stuff that AMD is saying to us as well. It does like, it proves that you don't need to run your CPU at 95 degrees. And in fact, for me personally, I feel like running this CPU at 95 degrees is much more detrimental than running it at 55 degrees. But of course, AMD want to get those over five gigahertz all cores out of the box. They want to beat Intel's all core speeds. They want to beat them on the benchmarks by as much as they can. But the problem is they're doing it at the cost of really this time around making it so that you do have to go out and buy that bigger motherboard that much bigger cooler that much bigger power supply all because you're adding onto a product that really didn't need it though in my opinion i would have much rather have seen amd just release a 4.8 gigahertz 5.3 gigahertz single boost 7950x with much lower power consumption and much better temperatures than what they released here or at the very least just give people the option when say for instance they first boot up their pc do they want power efficiency mode or do they want maximum performance i would be picking the power efficiency mode just because i know how much better it can be anyhow guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did then be sure to hit that like button for us and also look forward to seeing you in the review and if you have any questions or comments about today's video then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below Skipping question of the day, just we've got to get bunker down because I do want to get the used parts hunt done for the month too. Give you guys an update on what's going on in the used sector. And in terms of the full review, stay tuned for that. It's coming up next. And also there are some other talks of shaving down the IHS if you want to drop temperatures. I haven't tried that. I'm not going to try that just because I'm very happy with the undervolting. Though Debar, I think, also... Uh, delidded his CPU and got better temperatures that way too. So there are some other methods there if you're game enough to drop your temperatures outside of undervolting. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.